I don't know anything about running a laser or designing or even what to make. Does that sound like you? It's okay, because watch how easy lasers can be. Hey y'all, my name is Nick and welcome back to State of Woods Co. So you are interested in lasers but don't know anything about them. That's okay. I want to show you just how easy it can be from knowing nothing to cutting your first project. Let's start with the very basics. What laser do you need for the type of projects that you're wanting to do? Well, there is a long answer to that, but it does not have to be a hard one to answer. There are three main types of lasers in today's market. The first and my favorite laser is our CO2 laser. This is our Thunder Nova 51 100 watt laser. These units are good for most anything you want to cut or engrave. Woods, MDFs, plastics can be lasered with very few limitations. These are usually the most common machine that can engrave the Yeti and the Stanley Tummers like you see everywhere with the help of a rotary tool. CO2 lasers can range in a bunch of different sizes from small desktop models all the way to large industrial beds. I think a CO2 laser is the most well-rounded unit because of its ability to cut so many materials and provide so many options of cutting styles. These units can cut much faster than some of its other laser counterparts out there. Another type of laser is the diode laser. This is our X-Tool S1. In my opinion, I consider a diode laser more of a hobby style laser compared to a CO2 laser only because of the speed and the abilities that it has. These can cut many materials as well, but they have what I consider more limitations. I won't get into the physics of how all of these lasers work in this video, but diode lasers, because of the way they generate the laser and the wavelength of light, they can't cut all substances. For example, a CO2 and a diode laser can both cut acrylic, but because of the wavelength of light in a diode and how the laser is reflecting through, say, clear acrylic, I can't cut clear materials on here. Now, dark colored acrylics, I can cut fine, and other things like woods and MDFs, of course. Now, a diode laser, I feel, does a much better job of doing some high detail work like photo engraving and things like that. These units run much slower than a CO2 and have much less power, and that's why I think a CO2 has a much bigger advantage. But when it comes to high quality detail stuff, a diode laser can sometimes be superior. These lasers can cut some very thin steel, where I would not attempt that much on the CO2 laser. So there is another benefit of these. These can range in a size as well and can come in a very small footprint like these desktop models or even portable lasers and even have the ability to mount on a CNC machine. Now, if you wanna cut more metals and have really good engraving qualities, look into fiber lasers. These machines usually are in a small footprint like a desktop unit and even small portable lasers, but there are industrial large applications with these. Fibers are really well known for cutting reflective metals of all types and other various materials. What I find mesmerizing about a fiber laser is how they engrave. It's almost a dance of light and patterns to achieve the right cut depth and shapes. You can even change the wavelength of the laser beam to achieve different colored engraves on metals. I don't own a fiber laser yet, so I don't wanna speak out of turn on all their physics and capabilities since I don't have the experience with them like I do with these other two lasers, but they can be very versatile. Now a laser is only as good as what you tell it to do. There are softwares out there that can make this very easy. A lot of people think that the most daunting thing about lasers is the laser itself, but really the software is where your learning curve comes into play. There are several types of software that you will need to create files to run on the laser. You have two types of software. Ones like Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator, those are your designing files, the programs used to create your graphics. Then you have softwares like Lightburn or CorelDRAW that communicate your drawings to your laser. For our lasers, we use Lightburn. This is probably the most popular software on the market for lasers. You can create whatever graphic or logo or even photo in your design file and bring it into Lightburn for cutting. You don't have to be a graphic designer or an artist to use a laser. Let's make this as simple as possible. You can bring in a JPEG, SVG, DXF, whatever format almost you want into Lightburn. If it's an SVG file or a file with vectors already, then it's very simple. Vector files are basically the lines that the laser would follow to create the cut or engrave. 
Think of it like an outline of your graphics. If you bring in a JPEG or a photo, you can do what we call image trace, and it will create the vectors that you want. Basically, you want to get the graphic down to an outline of it. Now, what's really cool about this day and age is you can purchase files or pull images offline right into your software and can get to cutting very easily. Always be careful of if there is any copyright or licensing limitations before selling those items, but for personal use and nonprofit, it's usually okay. Let's design something together that is very simple. I want to show you just how easy this can really be. Why don't we design a quick little stake sign for a house plant or for the garden? Think about this shape. It's just a rectangle with rounded edges and then a long rectangle that comes to a point. You will find that whether you're doing lasers or CNC work, shapes are just a bunch of squares and circles. In all of design, that's what makes up objects. So let's draw this as easy as we can. We will go straight into Lightburn because we can do some basic designs and shapes in this software and it will be the easiest and fastest way to get it ready to cut on the laser. So first thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna draw a rectangle. So let's do a three inch by three inch rectangle. So I will draw a box and I don't worry about the size of it now because I can go up to the top here and I can say I want it three inches. And let's do an inch and a half. So now we have our three inch by inch and a half box. Okay, so one thing about this shape is that we've got those curved edges. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a radius to the corners. So you'll go down and click on this radius button and let's change it to a quarter of an inch radius. And then what we'll do is we'll just simply click in each corner and it'll apply that radius. So we have the basic shape of the actual sign of this unit. Now, we've got a, another shape coming down that really looks like a rectangle with that sharp point on it. So let's draw a very thin rectangle. So we're gonna do another box and we're gonna keep it really thin and really long. So let's go a quarter of an inch thick and let's say we're gonna go six inches long because some of that's gonna poke into the dirt. Okay, so we've got our second shape here and we can move it around and we can sort of put it exactly where we think it's gonna sort of sit in the moment. Now, the other part of this little stake is the actual final little point. And all this is, is a triangle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the pentagon shape and we're gonna draw a pentagon. Now, pentagon has six sides on it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what we wanna do is change the number of sides so that it only has three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the shape and we're gonna hold down the command key or the alt key on a PC and you're gonna see this little purple icon appear every time I push the key. And what we'll do is we'll grab it and we'll adjust it so that there's only three sides. And we can do multiple, multiple sided uh, parts on this unit. So what we need to do now, as you see, this triangle is sort of upside down. So we can go up and rotate it 180 degrees. And now we've got a triangle that sort of mimics the shape that we're gonna need. Now, obviously you see that the triangle and the quarter inch part are two different sizes. So what we're gonna do is actually go in and tell the width of that to just be a quarter of an inch. And now we've got our shape. Now. What we have essentially is three, three different shapes, okay? So what we wanna do is align all of these. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna select all three of them. Here at the top, you have an area that you can center items, whether it be vertical in the horizontal axis or center them completely together. So what we're gonna do is align them all vertically. So we'll just tell it to align in the center. And now you see that all of them have lined up in a straight line across this middle uh, plane. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna move these shapes into the position that we like and sort of build that shape out of all three. And then we'll center it one more time. Okay, so we have our rough shape. Now what we can do is fuse these together. In this type of software, it's called welding shapes together. So I've got all three of them selected. I'm gonna come over here to the far left button and this is gonna be our weld button. And when you click that, it forms all three into one part. So now we have our actual final shape 
of the little steak. So we have our shape we want to cut out. Now let's add some lettering. So now what we're going to do is apply our text to it. And you can, this is where you can be creative. You can apply any type of font and any type of verbiage that you want to in there. Or you could put pictures on there if you'd like. So we're just going to simply go over here and click on the font tool and type in what we want it to say. All right. So now what we can do, just like in any other type of design software, is you can scale these items and you can change the font. So if you wanted to have some funny little font, we could do that. Move it so you could see it. And you can scroll through and see all the different types of fonts that you want. All right, so we're just gonna simply grab from the corner and we're just gonna scale it however we want to. And then we're just gonna place it right in our piece. So now that we have our project we want to run, it's time to understand how a laser works. So a laser is all based on power and speed. There are a couple more small variables to take into account, but what creates the basics of cutting and engraving is power and speed of the lens moving. Think about it like this. I blast the laser at high power. It doesn't take long for the laser to cut through something. So once I start blasting the laser through, I can start moving quickly to cut. The lower the power of the laser, the longer it takes to cut through. So if I start moving the laser, I have to move slower. So higher the power, the faster I can move the cut. So it's the same for engraving. I'm going to apply power to cut, but I don't want to cut all the way through the material. I want to just etch the top. So I will reduce my power, but I will speed up the motion very fast. Now each material that you put in the laser will cut or engrave at different settings because of the density and the material that you're using. There are test files that you can do on all lasers to fine tune your favorite settings for the material you're cutting. Anytime I get a new material I have never cut, I run files like these. So let's cut and engrave our project onto some quarter inch plywood. I have done my test so I know my powers I like for this material. So now that we have our file, we need to assign the vectors with their instructions. For the outside perimeter of the project, I click on the black zero zero here on the bottom. This assigns the vectors with a task, and in this case, I have the black zero zero as my line cuts. So the letters, I'm going to select them, and I want to hit red zero two. Red zero two for me, I have set up as a fill engrave. These colors and numbers are just a way that you can assign different tasks to different pieces of your file. So on the right side of the screen, here I have my line and my fill settings. I can double click on the zero zero line and it will open my setup screen. This is where we set our power for the laser and the speed at which it moves. We will make the power higher and move slowly to cut through the wood. For the engrave of the letters, I will click on the red zero two fill and will set my powers lower but faster to do the fill engrave. I hope this is all making sense to you. It's all about controlling the power and speed to get the outcome that you're wanting. Now the next thing people question a lot is the air assist. Air assist is compressed air pushing through the lens nozzle to help push debris and dust away from the cut, but it also helps to extinguish the flame that the laser creates from burning the material you're cutting. For full cut throughs, I use air assist with high air. For engraves, I use very low air. We can control air assist toggled on and off here on the light burn inside each setup screen. But we can also control the airflow coming in here at the front by turning these adjustment knobs. You can play with these a lot and it won't adjust much with the cutting ability as much as it will adjust for the cleanliness of the engraves and the cuts. Now whatever order we have our cut layers in is the order that they are performed on the laser. So in this case we have our outside cut first followed by the engrave. I like to do it this way on a laser because if there is ever a bow in my material, the shape I cut out when I finally cut it all the way through will lay flat down onto the bed and now it's a flat across for the engrave to have an even focus across the project. Okay, so we have our file drawn and our settings are the way we need them. We can send the file to the laser by just hitting the send to laser button. It's that simple. So now at the laser itself, we can select our file from the menu here 
and hit the enter to select. Now our machine needs to know where our material sits in the bed. In your software, you'll see a grid with some select buttons. This is called your origin position. Typically, in the laser and the CNC world, we set our origin to the bottom left of our material. What this means is that we need to communicate to the laser where our job will start and where our material is on the bed of the laser. A laser is focusing a beam of light at your material to cut. Light bends through the lens and refracts back out in a cone shape. Where the light crosses together is the perfect spot for your laser beam to cut. So what we need to do is focus our lens so that the beam intersects inside our material. Now some lasers have a different focus point, so you need to find that number from your laser company. For our Thunder Nova, the focus is six millimeters above our material. The laser company gives you a piece of acrylic that's the correct thickness to set your focus. All you do is place this piece on your material and drop your lens onto the top and tighten the set screw. This will lock the lens in place for the right focus. Now we have everything set up. We have our file drawn and sent to the laser. We have our origin set for where the material is. We have our focus set so we can go ahead and hit the start button. So there we have it, a quick, simple little project that we can get really creative with. And remember, if you don't think you're good at the design side of it all, and you want to buy files or hire someone to draw files for you, you absolutely can. It's all about having fun with it and being as creative as you can. Get your power and your speeds right, play with the air assist a little bit, but just get out there and cut something. I hope this helps you a little in understanding how easy and fun lasers can be. Thanks for watching and get out in the shop and burn something. Get creative with it and until next time, have fun with your laser.